Would you believe me if I told you that this video right here is AI generated? Well, it absolutely is. In this video, I'm going to give a breakdown of the technology behind training models like these and some intuition on how they work. Without further ado, let's get into the first episode of Neural Breakdown. So from a 30 feet view, this work uses a neural image rendering algorithm called Neural Radiance Fields, lovingly known as NERF. NERF takes in a handful of 2D images of a 3D scene taken from different angles and then trains deep neural networks to synthesize new unseen images from arbitrary camera positions and angles. This video is produced by a cool new variant of NERF called ZipNERF. Now there is some background needed to fully understand the nuances of this paper, but I'll try my best to explain it concisely and not dive into too much high mathy stuff, but a basic understanding of how neural network works will definitely help you to understand this. If you are finding me for the first time, I'm a new YouTuber and I like to make videos on machine learning, AI and game development in Unity. I'll be making more of these AI breakdown videos on this channel along with my usual devlogs. So if any of these interests you, please leave a like and subscribe. You are magnificent. Now let's now zoom in a bit and understand how NERF works. Imagine you want to be able to store a 3D scene in a way that you can render 2D images of the scene from any arbitrary camera position and angle. A brute force way to do this would be to just keep a 3D voxel based grid representation of the scene uh, and you can use an algorithm like ray marching to shoot out rays into the scene from each pixel and then calculate its color depending on which voxels it intersected. Sadly, this scales badly to large scenes and storing complex volumetric data like this requires a lot of memory, often in, in terms of gigabytes of memory. This is where neural networks come in. The original NERF paper from 2020 trained a fully connected dense neural network that inputs uh, the X, Y, Z coordinates as well as the rays direction uh, as theta and phi and outputs the RGB color and the density at that position. The density basically means how much content is present at that position. If it's empty, the density will be zero. Uh, if it's fully opaque, it will be one. If it's like semi-transparent, like glass or something, it'll be between zero and one. It is worth noting that training a nerf is very different from traditional machine learning algorithms where we usually have a large data set which we train our models on and then we use it for inference on new data. With NERF, we start with the data set of 2D images of a 3D object and then we try to overfit that data on a single randomly initialized neural network. Well, it's not always single. You know, sometimes there are two neural networks involved, but you get the idea. So what you really end up doing with these neural networks is have a super compressed representation of this entire 3D scene and store it uh, instead of in five gigabytes, you store it in three megabytes or something. So now you have a way to query the density and color at a given coordinate. How do you now render an image? You shoot out rays from each pixel of your image and to determine the color of the ray, NERF does something called the hierarchical volume sampling. First, it samples multiple coarse points separated out widely along that ray and evaluate each point using a neural network they call the coarse network. For the values that the coarse networks say are high, NERV does 
a second round of um, important sampling around those locations and evaluate it using a second neural network called the fine network. This allows Nerf to save up on computation because the first round of sampling that is coarse and more sparse will usually rule out areas that are empty and most of the computation can be focused on the important sampling regions with the fine network. Another important trick that Nerf does is instead of directly passing in the input coordinates as flowed values into the network, Nerf trains positional encodings that map those coordinates into high dimensional high frequency vectors. They derive these encodings using combinations of sine and cosine waves very similar to how positional encodings work in transformer papers if you're familiar with them. This work revolutionized the research field at the time but it still had a bunch of limitations which people are working on fixing and improving ever since. There were issues like these jagged lines around the edges also known as aliasing artifacts and also issues with rendering multiple objects and at different scales in unbounded scenes and above all really slow training times. So how did we go from this to that? In 2022, NVIDIA Labs published their amazing paper on instant NGP that sped up nerve training from a few hours to a few seconds. They introduced three factors to achieve this ginormous leap in speed. Optimizing training with CUDA and GPU drivers, training very small MLP layers. And third and most interestingly, they introduced the novel idea of multi-resolution hash encoding. So they divide up this 3D volume into multiple spatial grids with each of a different resolution. And they maintain a hash table of vector encodings for, for each of the corner of these grids. They have some grids that are spaced apart that capture the global information about the scene and there are some that are more finely spaced that capture very minute details in the scene and then to find the embedding of any queried point along a ray they would look at all the grids that that point intersects with and use the hash table to look up the encodings of the corners of these grids and then they will do a linear interpolation on those embeddings to produce an average embedding for each resolution. This method allows some amazing stuff that's even difficult to comprehend like you know gigapixel image approximation like if you look at this image and you keep zooming in it never stops giving and it's training and inferencing all of this in real time which is just absolutely crazy. It's a truly amazing and a seminal piece of work. And I'll definitely link some presentations below and the paper if you want to check it for yourself. So the Zipnerf paper tries to improve on this hashing idea. They claim that the original INGP method still causes some aliasing artifacts because the network is only evaluated at a single point. Like you're querying a single point and you're querying the nearest neighbors of, of that point and then you're collapsing all of those embeddings which is an infinitesimally small point. What the Zipnerf paper proposes instead is that it sends out a cone into the scene instead of a ray. For each conical ray, we will want to average out all the content within the visible section of the cone. This idea of casting cones instead of rays is actually from a previous paper called MIPNERF by the same guys, which I'll share in the description. So they sample a number of points around a spiral like this and then treat 
each of these points as a Gaussian. The final encoding is then derived using the hash encodings of the corners this Gaussian intersects with. The encoding contributed by each corner is also downweighted by how much that Gaussian actually fits within that cell. So this whole thing achieves two things. We are taking multiple samples to calculate the colors, which reduces the noise in the image because you're super sampling. And this acts as an anti-aliasing strategy, but at the cost of longer inference time and running slower than INGP. Second, because the encodings now depend on the width of these Gaussians and the spread of the cone gets larger as it moves away from the camera, the network now has a sense of scale which was missing previously. Pretty smart and you can see the comparison between the two methods right here. So the next issue the authors point out is that of z-aliasing. Z-aliasing occurs when a ray misses an object in the scene depending on the camera's distance from the object, introducing these tearing artifacts. To address this, the authors introduce a concept called proposal supervision. In an earlier paper called the MIBNERV 360, the authors had replaced the system of maintaining a coarse network and a fine network with instead training a proposal network and a NERF network. Now, this is gonna get a little confusing, but hang on. The proposal network is a small neural network that is queried on a bunch of course points and outputs just the densities for each query point along the ray. The NERF network is a much larger neural network that would then sample multiple points along the high weighted regions identified by the proposal network. So the NERF network is trained with the supervised loss with respect to the ground truth pixel color, whereas the proposal network was trained to to output distributions that are as close to the NERF network as possible. To design a loss like that is not trivial because it is not straightforward to apply a loss between two differently spaced histograms. Intuitively, the way they optimized this proposal network was so that each bin it outputs has a lower value than the sum of all bins that overlap in the NERF models distribution. Thus, the proposal loss is only optimized if the proposal network's values exceed the sum of the overlapping bins returned by the NERF network. This makes the densities output by the proposal network not smooth with respect to the scene's density and the authors believe that is what is causing the model to skip scene content. So, the authors fix this by a neat signal processing trick. They convolve the NERF distribution to form this piecewise linear probability density function like this, and then they compute the cumulative distribution function of this and basically slice up the CDF by the proposal network's bin endpoints. Finally, by taking the difference between the adjacent points, they reconstruct a new histogram that now have the same bin endpoints as the proposal network. Now that's some hunky-dory stuff, but now these two distributions have the same coordinates and they can just employ a simple element-wise loss to train the proposal network to output distributions similar to the NERF network. And that's a hell of a trick. So with that, they have most of the ingredients for ZipNerf. It's truly an amazing piece of technology. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it for the first time. Yes, it is an order of magnitude slower than the instant NGP method, mainly because of the multi-sampling approach that ZipNerf takes, but the results are so consistent and that just makes it so beautiful. There are a lot to talk about regarding this paper and this research area, but I will leave you guys here with some paper links and some presentations I found helpful when I was trying to understand this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe.